Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. As expected, we're watching severe weather on Friday and I kind of had a little sneaky suspicion yesterday we were going to see the risk go up and sure enough, looking at the data today and the setup, it does look like our risk for severe weather will be higher tomorrow, probably in the medium range for most of the region and a much different uh, coverage than we had on Wednesday, which was really isolated. So where is this system coming from? Well, you can see what's going on to the west. We've got a pretty dynamic system over Oklahoma, uh, Texas, parts of uh, Louisiana and Arkansas. That's a system that will be heading our way. Today's actually a great day, very big lull in the activity. So if you want to get outside, today's a day to get some work done. In fact, I'm going to try to power wash the back porch, get the pollen off uh, before this system moves in. But you get the idea here on um, this system moving in from the west. So let's look at the severe weather outlook today first. And I'll pop it up and you could see just ahead of this system, that's where we're expecting severe weather. And you can see it's in that low to medium and even high range. So pretty potent system. But this will be traveling to the east. So by the time it gets here tomorrow, we're going to be in the low to medium risk for most of the area. So pretty significant um, set up here. Now, as far as the type of severe weather that this is going to bring, we can always look at the, the probability of tornadoes. And the area in green is a 2% prob, but there is a little area up here near Raleigh and the, the Virginia border where, where it's 5%. Now, the reason that's 5%, and I'll show you in a minute, is that we've got the potential for the warm front, which will be in here, to help induce what we call helicity, basically allowing storms to spin along the, the warm front. The cold front's coming in here, so most of the Western Carolinas We'll be dealing with the warm front part of this so that's what we're looking at as far as the tornado threat now let's look at the wind threat the hail threat excuse me we'll do the hail threat first about a 15 percent chance of hail and the wind threat about a 15 percent chance so wind and hail is still much higher but unlike wednesday which was primarily wind and hail there is a little bit of a tornado risk because we could see some supercells develop as we go into friday so let's get right to the details with the future cast here Okay, so the setup for this is your classic kind of severe weather setup. You see the system back to the west. I'll go a couple hours into the afternoon, and without even looking at anything but the radar, you can kind of tell what's going on here. Here's our low-pressure system. The cold front is here, but there's that stationary slash warm front in here that will be lifting north. So there will be a little area of enhancement along that warm front, and you'll actually see that. Remember why I showed you that 5% that chance of tornadoes up in there? Watch what happens as we go through time in the future cast. So this is overnight tonight, you know, really no issues. We'll go into the early morning hours. I'm going to stop this at 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday. So there's a hint of that warm front somewhere in here. You actually see some broken thunderstorms. The main front is still back here, but the low is here. So this is all kinds of wind shear. And if you've never heard me refer to wind shear, it's really just wind changing direction with height. So in the lowest levels of the atmosphere, the wind's going to be coming in like this, generally from the south. Up here, the winds are actually coming in from the east. So you can see any storms that develop there are going to have some shear. And then in the mid-levels, the wind is coming in like this. So as storms get higher vertically, they tap into that changing wind direction. It causes the whole storm to rotate. Um, and those rotating storms do produce tornadoes. But remember, rotating storms also produce hail and wind because that, that, that twisting thing is like a screw shoving air higher up into the atmosphere, which then cools it, and it's got to come rushing back down in the form of a downburst, like we saw yesterday in parts of um, Mooresville, but on a much bigger scale on Friday, or you get hail to form because it's really, really cold up there. So let's go through time. I'm going to stop this basically 7 a.m. on Friday. So maybe some lingering showers left over, some clouds over the Charlotte area, but you see the line beginning to form to the west. Watch what happens as we go into the middle of the day. I'll stop this at noon. I'm going to zoom in closer because we're going to get more details here. You can see there's a line forming here. Um, and it is a line, but there's individual cells, which are more of a concern than just a squall line, which would be straight line winds only, maybe some hail. Yeah, you can get a spin-up tornado. But these individual cells we call supercells are the ones you do not want to see. Um, those are the ones I worry about the most. You can see that line. This is 2 o'clock approaching the mountains. So again, the timing of this peak heating of the day. Remember, the sun sets after 8 o'clock. So our peak heating now is around 4, 5, even 6 o'clock in the evening. So we go to 4 o'clock. Look at this line approaching from the west. And embedded in that line, um, if we see individual cells kind of pop up or even cells ahead of the line, those are we going to watch. But look up in there. That's also an area to watch tomorrow. And really, it's hard to tell if those are going to form until they do. But those are two areas that I would keep a close eye on. Uh, tonight and tomorrow as we get closer to the system. So by 5 o'clock, this system's moving across the Piedmont. You see it marching through. 
by six o'clock, it's right over us. It's pushing off to the east. You know, through eight o'clock, the sun is beginning to set. It pushes off to the east. And again, as that exits, the severe weather threat kind of comes to an end. But we're not done with the rain chances because, you know, there's a little bit on Saturday. The upper trough and the low pressure systems back here. So there will be some scattered showers into early Saturday. But I honestly think Saturday is not going to be all that bad because the main energy will be offshore. The low is really what's going to drive any rain chances on Saturday. So I can go as late as 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. And you can see all the energies up here. Our lingering showers would be just from here. So Saturday, honestly, is not looking too bad as far as severe weather. So let's loop this a couple times just to show you how this blasts into the region. So this is a pretty significant setup because, um, you know, you, I'm not, I don't have them displayed on here. But remember, the winds are really changing direction from the southwest and west in the mid-levels and from the low levels coming in like this. So we've got plenty of wind shear associated with that. And just to show you that, I'm going to show you some of the other parameters in place for tomorrow. We'll show you the tornado param parameter, the significant tornado parameter here. We'll go through time and I'll, I'll go into tomorrow afternoon. And again, you can see as we get into the afternoon hours, you know, notice along the line, but see the warm front also shows up where there's an enhanced area of tornado probabilities. Now, again, these aren't off the charts. This is not tornado outbreak setup, at least right now. But this is definitely a higher tornado risk than what we had on Wednesday. You can see as the system moves through, you know, tomorrow evening, there is a little bit of, a, you know, tornado parameter element to this. Let's look at those updraft helicities, which basically show the rotating storms. So I'll, I'll tilt this up here a little bit. And you can see I'm going to go through time, the rotating storms. And you can see the line moves through. There's a little specific area, you know, right in this line right there. That bears watching. So right in that vicinity, then up there in the warm front, boy, the tidewater region, that's something to watch. But there are a couple tracks there that do bear watching um, tomorrow as this line moves through. Let me pause it right here. And I'm going to do a sounding really quick just to show you the atmospheric setup here. Um, you can see the wind shear southwest to southwest to west. But let's go back. I'm going to go back one here. I'm going to go back a couple hours. Maybe two, two hours here. We'll go back to 30 hours out. Let it display here. So marginal severe setup, but you can see this wind shear with height. There is some cape. So there is there is some shear there. And again, the, the hazard is not off the charts. Again, I think our main concern with this system is not going to be um, a ton of tornadoes, but I can't rule it out. I still think straight line damaging winds are the main concern. But what happens on storm days, if the environment is just right or one or two storms can get in the right spot, you can get a tornado threat. And as I always say, remember, the threat for damaging winds tomorrow is 15%, okay? That's much higher than the 2% chance of a tornado, which is a small object. And just like we saw with the Mooresville incident, you know, people think, oh, that's a tornado. That was straight line winds, folks. Those downbursts and microbursts can cause as much damage as low-end EF1-2 tornadoes. So don't let your guard up in a setup like this because the severe thunderstorms are still potent. Do you need to seek shelter in the lowest level of your house in this setup? Probably not but I would have all the outdoor stuff secured. I would stay away from the windows and certainly don't be outside when these storms arrive tomorrow between 4 p.m. and about 7 p.m. Of course, I'll have updates over the next couple of days. Stay weather aware, everybody.